Hello, and welcome to this week's episode of Man, We're Too Old for This, here on the Nerd Eternal Network. I'm your host, the experience that some call Jason, and joining me today is... The token, told he was first, yet somehow second, Tarky. And today is just the two of us. The uh, circumstances are as what they are during the holidays. Yep. yep. <clears throat> so anyway, what the two of us are going to be talking about today are the things that kickstart our Christmas spirit. Yeah, you know, the things that get us in the mood for the holiday. Uh, and we'll probably segue into things we like to do, you know, around the holiday. You want to kick us off there, Tyler? Sure. The first thing that kickstarts the holiday for me is we have one radio station where we live that starts playing nothing but Christmas music way too early. But I still occasionally accidentally flip to that channel. And it will always kickstart me into the holiday spirit if I hear the Beach Boys Little Saint Nick. <laughs> if, like, Christmas songs don't normally do it for me. But for some reason, the, the little song about Santa Claus doing hot rod racing, just I'm just suddenly like, I really want it to be Christmas now. <laughs> and I just can't stop myself. Yeah, I don't usually start listening to the Christmas music until after Thanksgiving. I'm just a kind of old traditionalist like that, I guess. And that's when the radio station I'm talking about used to start, but now mm. they've started before Thanksgiving, which is weird to me. Now, this year it didn't bother me. This year I was like, shoot, if people need Christmas a little early, let it come. I don't care. <clears throat> but uh, now that particular song isn't necessarily one of mine, though. It, you know, it's, it's cute. I'm always listening for the song from The Grinch. Uh, I think it's just you're a mean one, Mr. Grinch. Yes, yes. Yeah. Uh, do you hear what I hear by uh, I believe it's Ben Crosby Bing Crosby excuse me uh, just my favorite version of that song uh, oh crap what was the other one well I want a hippopotamus I'm, for Christmas which is the best yeah, I was like, song ever written I, I'm pretty sure I want a hippopotamus for Christmas is going to be on your list there the one that probably triggers the most ah oh, it's Christmas time feel for me though is the first time that I'll flip over to that station and the uh, the Peanuts theme is playing. I mean, technically, I think it's Lu Lucy and Linus's theme or something like that. But uh, it, it's the one, it's the song you think of when you think of the, the Peanuts specials. Yeah, there's nothing especially Christmassy about it, other than I think the first time anybody heard it was with the Charlie Brown Christmas special. But I start hearing that little piano, and that's that. It's over for me at that point. <clears throat> see some other ones that get me were uh i think it's god bless ye merry gentlemen by uh oh now i'm forgetting the band's name is it the one that is the, uh bare naked ladies band that one and, yeah it's bare naked ladies and uh yeah bare naked ladies yeah sarah mclaughlin does that one with them yeah that it becomes, one... it, it's a bit of a medley of two songs I think they kind of segue into another song during that. And the uh, the acapella band that does a, another medley of Christmas songs and a Hanukkah song and Africa. Uh, Straight No Chaser. Straight No Chaser. Yeah, that hitting you, that hitting YouTube is, is probably one of the things that kind of made them as much of a name as they are. Yeah, because it only showed up on radio like six or seven years after they made it. Yeah, yeah, something like that. But yeah, their medley one is really fun. Who Spiked the Eggnog is really fun. Uh, they also did the Christmas Can Can. I and, you know, realize you're a big fan. <laughs> dude, I listen, I've, I've gone and listened to some of the stuff that they do that's not you know Christmas related. The Christmas stuff is just how I stumbled onto them. Uh, you know, they do covers of other stuff, but that's getting off the point. But yeah, they're they're a lot of fun. Come think of it, I haven't watched any of their stuff this year. I need to. I also like the uh, We Three Kings, but I like the version from the old... Uh, shoot, what was that guy's name? 
There's a claymation Christmas special that... Shoot, I've, I've got it on DVD around here somewhere. Just bought it this year. The guy did three holiday specials. He did a Halloween one, a Christmas one, and then an Easter one. And it's... You've got the three wise men singing the song in a very traditional fashion. But then when it kicks to the chorus, it moves over to their camels that sing it in more of a doo-wop version. And then they're, you know, I, each, each group is giving themselves, cra you know, kind of looking at each other crazy. As they're almost competing in their style until, until like, the last verse where they're, you know, all singing it together. I do not recall that existing. You know, they didn't air it just a whole lot. It was in Like, like I don't 90s. doubt you. But I just don't recall it. I'll send you the YouTube link at some point. See, and something that gets me in the Christmas spirit that's like very specific to our family is when mother started making, when mother starts making the confectionaries, just making those uh, the chocolate peanut butter cracker cookie things. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. As soon as I see like with that blue tub start filling up with that stuff, it's like, <laughs> oh, it's the holiday season, baby. It's it's time to eat those and only those anytime I would eat a meal. And they're and they're such simple little things. You could do you know, me or you could do them at home. Oh yeah, it's it's peanut butter and a cracker, you dip it in hot chocolate, you set it on a wax paper tray, you're yeah. done. Yep. You know, she'll, cause she'll do that she'll do those and the dipped uh pretzels a lot of times. Yeah, the dipped pretzels. And you know, she'll 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 do cakes or whatever, but those are just the kind of little simple somethings that she'll She'll, she'll kind of do well, those in like, bulk. Yeah, it, like, oh, it's Christmas time. I can now just reach my hand in a bowl and have a have a treat. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> I'm trying to think of anything, like, in our local area. I don't think anything in a local area really gets me for Christmas. Because, like, we have people that do fancy house displays and all, but... I like seeing those go around, you know, around my neighborhood. Everybody's about like me. You know, you put up two or three strings of lights. You may have a decoration or two you yeah. stick out in the yard, but no, nobody gets too crazy. Uh, I can remember being a little kid and driving through the neighborhoods in Decatur where, you know, it was almost every house and then like, some streets were having competitions. And... Yeah. Because mom would like, you know, we went out to eat like after church or something. A lot of times, Mom would make Dad pull into one of those neighborhoods and drive around a little bit on the way home or something. Yeah, the Halloween decorations and Christmas decorations, Mom would do that. Well, I say would. Our mother is alive. She probably still does that. We're, yes, we just we're don't... just not in the car with her. <laughs> right. We usually eat with them and then go our separate ways now. Yes. Uh... Now... We, there is one re thing that reverse reverses me in the Christmas spirit because I remember this having to do this one, and I don't. Th I'm not sure you had to do it. W did you ever have to be part of the Cub Scout slash Boy Scout Christmas parade? No, I don't believe I did. Oh gosh, it's just you just sit on top of a fire truck. Which was start. Hey, it started strong. We got to sit on top of a fire truck, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. and we were waving at people. And it was nighttime, and everything was shiny. They just, we just, it was like twenty something degrees outside, and we were on top of a fire truck that was driving places, <laughs> and it was windy, and like after the first thirty minutes, it got real tiresome and then mm. after the hour mark we got real hurt <laughs> it was just cold and we all had red noses we were all sniffling and there were only like six or seven people on the street at that point it was basically over but we had to finish the route mm -hmm. and just anytime i hear about that anytime i hear about a christmas parade it just my mind flashes back to that horrible horrible time i had and i went <laughs> christmas I don't, parades I don't. give you flashbacks Christmas parades, because it's just like I've I just now if there's a Christmas parade at night, I look at anyone that's on top of something, and just go you're good, you're in for a bad time. It's just not going to be fun for you in 20 minutes. Mm -hmm. Like the novelty will wear off the moment there's not 20 people cheering for you. 
So what? anytime I hear like, because like this year it was like there's Christmas fireworks, and I was like, ooh, that sounds nice, where no one, where no one will have a bad time. And then they're like, oh, the parade's back on. I went, well. <laughs> I have never been in a Christmas parade. I don't know that I've ever even gone to one. Parades were never something that really caught my attention. I was always kind of like, why? Trust me, after being in one, I'm like, why? <laughs> I assure you, your mentality is not a mistake, sir. You know, some, some, you know it, something where if I was in New York and it was the, the Macy's Thanksgiving Day Parade, okay, maybe. All the big balloons and stuff, it's a big event. You know, that might be neat to go to once, but... Did something you wanted to be afloat become afloat? Uh, I was I think I was excited when Spider Man was afloat, or a balloon, I should say. I don't specifically yeah. remember any of the rest of it though. You know anybody else? Uh, this is this is a bit of a segue since it's Macy's Day, but when Foster's Home for Imaginary Friends had a float, I was happy <laughs> because they started a song and then Rick Astley kicked the door out and began Rick rolling the entire crowd. Oh, nicely done. Yeah, it was when Rickroll was still, like, a thing that was happening on the internet, but, like, you had to be, like, in the know to understand what's going on. Because, mm -hmm. like, oh, all was, the newscasters... It was still a fairly new thing. Well, like, all the casters were confused, but, like, all the kids knew what it was. And that's who it was for, so... Yes, and it was a kid's float, so... And, anyway, back and to... The, 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 despite it being a Thanksgiving Day parade, it still fits into Christmas, because you always have Santa Claus at the very end of it. And for a lot of folks, like... Todd, if he were on here, he'd be talking about it. That was yeah. all, when he was a little kid, that was like what he considered the official start of Christmas. Oh, the signal of like, all right, all right, Thanksgiving has moved through, and yep. there's Christmas on the tail end, and, and begin. And that's why they always have Santa Claus at the, t at the very end. Uh, now, I never watched the parade much as a kid, you know. If it, Once again, if it was on, and, and I, you know, and they were showing that some of the floats, I might or balloons, I might stop and see, you know, what balloons there were, but. But, uh, see, but kicking it back in, something that will always get me, I always enjoy hearing that the Grinch will be played. Like, because when I was a child, I'd watch it, and that was, I don't know why it was a Christmas, because, like, looking back on it, I don't particularly like the Grinch movie. Like the old one. The cartoon? The Adam Sandler one even has worn thin on me through the years. But, like, originally... You mean the Jim you're right. It's Jim Carrey. It's not Adam Sandler. That's my bad. I now want to see an Adam Sandler Grinch movie. <laughs> I do not want to see an Adam Sandler See how movie bad it would be. But yes, Jim Carrey. That's my bad. Yeah. I liked I the Jim Carrey one when I went to watch it. I don't know if I'd want to, you know... I don't think it's something I would rewatch over and over again. Yeah. With the cartoon the, the, the original one, I remember, like, as a child, just sitting there and watching it. And, like, I don't recall enjoying watching it but i remember feeling good at the end it's a very strange nostalgic memory that i keep like every year i go back and watch it to trigger that memory because i was just sitting in the dark in the living room with a blanket over me like drinking a hot chocolate that i had made watching the grinch at like age nine and I'm just like, I just want to keep going back to that place in my mind every year. It's not so much that it was that it's like your favorite cartoon. It's just a very nice memory where that cartoon happened to be played. Yeah, because like it was just at the end of the movie. Everything was happy. Nine year old me was like, yay, everyone's happy. I'm sipping a hot chocolate. I'm warm and it's snowing outside. I'm just like, yeah, this is the life. <laughs> It will never be better than this. And unfortunately, you were right. <clears throat> and every Christmas, I try to... I try to... You, that should be a lesson for me, that you, you can't relive a miracle. Mm. That moment was a miracle for me. That was my little nine-year-old Christmas miracle of I don't... Re it wasn't Christmas Day, obviously. And I don't remember why I was home and the parents weren't. But for some, I don't even remember why I was by myself at so such a young age. Well, is it possible that I was back in my room, or Eric might have been in some other room? Maybe. I, I once again, young child memory. I'm not yeah, sure yeah, I remember. Yeah. 
I'm just thinking I work third shift. I could very easily have been asleep in my room, you know. Oh, yeah. Maybe I was sick. Cause I don't normally run around with blankets on, so I may have been sick. And it may have been like Sunday or something. The parents had been at church or something, and I was just at home. Yeah, there ain't no telling. I'm trying to remember at this point, and it would be it would, this would be me struggling to remember. But yeah. I'm just trying to rationalize what the memory now. Yeah, I'm trying to think of what what stuff on TV kind of kicks it off for me. I do like watching The Grinch. I'm trying to think of what would come on around Christmas that would. Now, when I was younger, of course, I would catch Rudolph every year, and I always loved the stop motion animation stuff, so I had to see Rudolph. The Peanuts Christmas special, of course. See, like, all the Christmas movies where they look like ornaments or decorations, I tried to skip out on as a kid. Really? Because I had such a, like, decorating the tree with Mother is not a fun experience. And you know this. <laughs> it's a, it, it is a chore, yes. It's It's a chore that, like, you feel like going in like, all right, maybe this year I can like expedite it, make it kind of fun for me, put stuff where I want it. It doesn't work out that way. <laughs> Mother always goes, okay, where's the three ornaments that J of Jason's that have to be on the tree? And I'm like, I don't remember what of the 17 shoeboxes we put this in. And Mother says, well, you're going to have to find it. Let's start cycling through them. I'm like, oh, my God. <laughs> and I swear every year I put them all back together in the same location so I can just toss them all out again. And then they're in different shoe boxes. Like, did I mess up? Did Eric get bored and mess up? Did Mother change these halfway through the year just to confuse me? <laughs> but like seeing the tree, it's a it is decorated nicely. Mother puts in effort. Mm -hmm. Oh, definitely. it looks good. Yeah, and yeah. I remember and, you know these days they the use that little small tree, so it wouldn't be it wouldn't be near the pain. Oh yes, I mean oh, it's weird how after we grew up and like. I could easily reach wherever I need to on the tree to help assist and make it faster. Suddenly, it's not a big deal anymore. Suddenly, let's just put a tiny pink tree and be done with it. The moment we were all too, the moment we were all big enough and out of the house, suddenly they stopped caring about Christmas trees. The year or two that I put up my full size tree, which I actually got from Danny because his folks were throwing it out. I don't think I put a single decoration on it. It's pre-lit, so it's already got just kind of the white lights run through it. Mm. And I just put it up so I could open my, you know, open the shutters on my front window and have the trees sitting there to be seen from the road or like when I pull back into the house. Because that's what I like. That's one reason I put up the lights is I like pulling into my house with the lights on, with the with the Christmas lights up. Mm. Uh, and that looked nice, but. Now I find that if, basically, if I don't get that tree up the day after, a day or two after Thanksgiving, I don't bother. You know, if I drag my feet, let a week go by, I'm like, eh, it won't be up long enough to be worth the effort now. But I always put up my string of lights. I always put up my little, my little, I've got a little replica of this Charlie Brown Christmas tree that's like sitting on top of my Xbox right now. So that goes up every year, and I got one or two other little somethings I hang up around the house. Yeah, it's, for for me now, for the last couple years, well, hold on. Can I say something rude about you, sweetie, since you're in the room? <laughs> Every year for a while now, it's been like, hmm, I wonder what our Christmas decorations are. Ah, it's going to be skeletons again. I see. Oh, yes, because Mrs. Our Halloween decorations Mrs. the Token are... Millennial is very into Halloween. Yes, my spouse is very much enjoys Halloween, and once we put the Halloween decorations up, they do not come down for a yeah. while. Yes, I can remember the skeleton having the Santa hat in your window. I'm sure it's a fade. I'm sure she'll outgrow it. I'm sorry, what did you say? Sorry. What did you say there, Jason? I said, I'm sure it's a fade. Just a fade. I'm sure she'll outgrow it. And then I started shaking my head, no, but you can't see that. Yeah, I mean... If by a phase you mean like a phase of the sun, because it's been a dec, it's been about a decade and a half of Halloween being the favorite holiday of my spouse. Okay, now I'm being made fun of for only saying a decade and a half. I'm sorry. How long, sweetie? Has it been forever?
Has Halloween not been your favorite holiday? For you? Halloween has always been your favorite holiday. Okay, don't sass me on this. It's not like you've been married to her that entire time. No, but I've known them the entire time. Well, that's fair. That's true. Been to the, been to the house that they, second house grew growing up at. Yep, yep, yep. But anyway, back to back to actual back to Christmas. And not making fun of my spouse. Uh, so other than things that get that get you into this Christmas spirit, what are the things you like to do around the holidays? Obviously, like go anywhere that has like a specialty hot chocolate. <laughs> if you have a specialty Christmas hot chocolate, I will be going to your restaurant. And yes, that even means you, IHOP. You and your crazy three three mugs of hot chocolate. Different flavors, so I have to sh show up three different times to pour syrup and hot chocolate. Because they leave the syrup right there, you might as well put it in your hot chocolate. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Hmm. You know what? It's weird, I don't really associate hot chocolate with Christmas particularly. Oh, I don't particularly either. But it's winter, so they have new flavors of hot chocolate, and it's close enough to Christmas when we get cold enough to really, really want hot chocolate that I associate it with Christmas. Okay. So it's like every Christmas, I'm just like on the lookout. Who's got a new hot chocolate for me? Now I seem to do. Well, I do I'm... seem to recall uh, Steak and Shake having a holiday f flavored uh, milkshake. That I remember being some kind of, or maybe it was some kind of eggnog milkshake that was quite good. Oh, yeah, eggnog is another thing that I only do at Christmas time. Yeah, that's. I mean, granted, you don't you, you have trouble finding it otherwise, but but like yeah. we start get we start getting it around Thanksgiving, but I never buy it at that point. Oh, also, can we say something about our other brother? Sure. What he he became obsessed like. I guess it would be eight years ago now. Oh, the boiled, boiled custard? custard? Yes. Yeah. <laughs> like, every Christmas now, I, it's him. It, like, I'll, if I ever catch him buying it, he's, like, buying four containers of, like, four half gallons yeah. of boiled custard. It's just like, you you good? <laughs> I, I had a customer in there. I made me think about him just the other day. I had a customer asking me about that. Had to go to him and find it. I mean, I've had bold custard. It's like sweeter eggnog. I like it. Mm. See, I tried it's eggnog just... as a kid one time when Dad had some and did not like it at all. There are di eggnog has different flavors. Mm. And then Todd, one one Christmas, uh, I don't know, five or six years back now, I guess. Todd had me looking for for uh, you know, it was like right after Christmas. He's like, "Hey, if you see any eggnog marked down, get me some." Some like the the lactate eggnog because you know he's lactose intolerant or whatever. Yeah, don't don't give him milk. So you know, I grabbed two of them and it's like okay, I got them in my refrigerator. You know, whatever day we were getting together to play Xbox or whatever, I was gonna carry them down there. The day after I bought him, he found out that he was diabetic. Ah, so he's like, nope, keep that stuff away from me. So I'm like, hmm. So I tried it. I was like, oh, this is some good stuff. Yeah, and I don't like, get heavy into it, but. Though I was using, mm. those first couple of years, I was using it on cereal around the holidays. You take some eggnog, you pour it over the Rocky Mountain Chocolate Factory cereal, which they don't make anymore. Oh, that was some good stuff. It's also good over, like, vanilla Frosted Flakes, but anyway. The weird thing is, I'm not lactose intolerant. But I haven't found anything that was as good as that, in, that lactate I had the first time. Huh. Yeah, it's weird. I, know. I wonder. Do they make any specialized Christmas cereals around here? I don't know. I don't eat a lot of cereal. Cause like I'm trying to think of one. Cause like I can think of you know Halloween ones, Count Chocula, Boo Berry, and all that. Well, Count Chocula they make year round. Yeah, Count Chocula is a staple, but his friends show up for Halloween. Right. 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 I'm trying to think of anything for Christmas. That, that I just can't think of any. You know, you get the little Captain Debbie cakes. Crunch. I don't remember if they do a special one or they just decorate like the Allberry boxes up for Christmas. Because, uh, you know, they're kind of color-like ornaments or whatever. 
Nah, I don't remember. But, uh... Somebody's marketing team really needs to get on that. Because that's like the one aspect of Christmas that ain't been super commercialized yet. And I want to see... I want to see about 19 companies suddenly jump in with a Christmas cereal and see who survives. (laughs) He won't be the one you like the best. Oh, I won't try any of them. I just want to see 18, 18 companies fail at making a Christmas cereal. Wow, you get mean around Christmas time. I mean to companies. Now, one odd Christmas tradition that I've got, and well, it's me and Todd. If, if he were here, he'd be talking about it too. Is our is our Christmas Eve massacres? It started back I don't know how many years ago. Back when back when the original Halo was the new hotness, game wise. And ever since then, I think without fail, we have gotten together on Christmas Eve, or, and uh, you know, in our Santa hats, go hit a couple of Walmart's or Targets looking for whatever whatever figure was currently out, and then retire back to play. We did it with Halo. We did it with Halos two and three. I don't think we did it with four. But it's some 3D shooter. We sit down and we just slaughter things. Uh, can't remember what we did last year. Probably Borderlands. Borderlands Trace. Yeah. And this year it's going to be Borderlands three. Uh, as of this recording, tomorrow. Well, actually, it'll go up today. So yeah, tomorrow. But uh, I had. As far as games, I almost always, and I I guess I'll probably heat up the old Wii U and play it again, is Mega Man X. Mm-hmm. Every year. Because it started, it started the first year I ever beat Mega Man X. So I was, like, fairly little. But we had to wait to wake up Mom and Dad. Yes, that was a general I, rule at our house. We could not get the parents up from Christmas morning before 6 o'clock. Yeah. But, you know, we'd always wake up before then. And we couldn't go up to get our gifts until we woke them up. Yeah, and I was, like, trying to find anything to, to like, bide time, but everything felt like it was moving super slow, mm-hmm. except Mega Man X. Mega Man X, I sat down and started playing it, and I'm just like, I just love this game. And I would get lost in playing it and not think about what time it was. So every year I'd wake up early and just be like, all right, let me just beat Mega Man X again real quick. And to the point where like I knew it would take me about half an hour, like a little over half an hour. I'd just burn through it and be like, all right, I got about five minutes left. Now, was it, just... was it around Christmas that you and Taylor used to, oh, you, you, Taylor, you and Eric used to do the uh Once the we had... Yes, once I had the Mega Man X collection for the PS2, we would get a secondary, we got a second uh, uh, cathode ray tube, a CRT, in the in our bedroom. Mm. So there were two TVs, I'd plug one up to one, he'd plug one up to the other, and we'd both play. Because they were basically speed running it against each other, or racing against each other, essentially. Yeah. And y'all did that for years. Yeah, we will did it we did it until the year i got the big tv when i got the big tv i messed up because that big tv has crap uh uh response time the uh, refresh rate. Uh, refresh rate yeah refresh thank rate. you yeah its refresh rate is bad for gaming so like there's one jump that it's nowhere near pixel perfect but you have to t- well and, like, I could cut on my Wii U right now, start the game up, do it. Without an issue. Mm-hmm. I tried, like, 20 or 30 times to do it and then gave up. Because I was losing so much time on that big TV. And that, I think that may have been the last year. Because then I realized, like, we there is a distinct competitive edge to whoever uses the CRT. Yeah, yeah. And also, like, it was like a two years after that that I moved out anyway, so. 
But yeah, for like five or six years in a row, it was compet it's competition, and years before that, it was just this is a game that I know I can beat, I know I love, and I know I will stop paying attention to the clock while playing. Which was always important. Oh, I can remember one. I think it was an Easter that we were all camped out in a. I guess it was mine and Eric's room at that point. But you were, you know, you were in there, that, and Kim was in there for that, and we all woke up so early, and we were, it, I mean, we just we put Cartoon Network on, and it was some weird cartoon that I remember from when I was younger. Uh, now, did you mean Tolkien to say Easter or something? Well, yes, I'm the 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 relevant part here is how slow the time. Yes, yes. Move. Because I was never a friend of, fan of Trollkins as a as a little kid, and trying to pass the time watching that that morning. Oh, and Christmas was always worse because you were always more excited for Christmas. You know, then I got up, you know, where I was working and stuff, and yeah. Then people would have to come knock on my door to get me up. All right, all right. Because the stuff I knew the stuff would be there whenever I woke up. So who cares? You already walked in the door and saw it. Actually, I would usually come through the back door. Uh, well, on some holidays, Christmas wasn't an issue because working thirds, I was off Christmas Eve all the time. Yeah, yeah. The stores closed, but yeah. <clears throat> so anyway, can you think of anything else? Uh, I mean, obviously. You know, I like getting together with the family. Um, yeah. For some reason, I don't count Christmas Day as a quote-unquote Christmas activity when that is literally the only thing that should count as the Christmas activity is mm -hmm. coming together for Christmas. But well, I guess you sit there, if you're like me, you just kind of sit there and go, well, that's the, you know, well, obviously Christmas dinner because, you know, it's Christmas. But, but as far as getting into the Christmas spirit leading up to Christmas... Now, the one thing, one last thing with, like, Christmas shopping for us is, oddly enough, the lowest on the list of things. Like, no part of Christmas shopping actually gets me in the mood for Christmas. Yeah, I'm kind of with you there. Like, I'm happy to get gifts for people. I, you know, they tell me they want something, I'll go get it. But it's just, like, that part of it, going and getting the stuff does not fill me with any kind of glee or excitement no no like seeing them open it and get it i'm like okay cool i'm i'm happy you're happy like that part is good for me yeah seeing them open it and be happy i want to get people like, gifts i insist on getting our brother eric a gift despite the fact he's always kind of eh, you know oh i i got him a joke gift this year i mean this year i'm getting him money but that's because he won't that's because he's he's saving it for something specific yeah, I'm breaking Eric and I's decade-long tradition of trading nothing. Y'all traded, what, dollar bills before that? Yeah, we, we traded the exact same amount of money, which is equivalent of trading nothing. Mm -hmm. Until because... mother and father got so tired. Right, because mother forced us. Right. Mother, mother said, you will get each other a gift. Yep. And we said, okay, we can work this system. And we agreed to work the system. Yeah, I was about to correct you because you started to say mom and dad. I, was like, I don't think dad was necessarily involved in that. Yeah, yeah. I, I say mom and dad just to make them a collective. Mm -hmm. They, we, If one of them says we have to do it, the other one's just going to... Oh, they're going to back each other up, yes. Yeah. <laughs> they, they, were, they, dad, they, they were never dad a couple you could play against us. each other. Yeah. Dad was not going to let us two-on-one mom about this. But after about five years of us trading money dad went hey look i don't know we we allow if we stop allowing money as a gift we have problems <laughs> so let's just tell them they can stop yep yep and y'all were and a little for, older by the end anyway so yeah well like we were old enough where us get, not getting each other gifts wasn't because we didn't like each other mm -hmm. it's because we just didn't like getting gifts yep yep we did not like having to get gifts for people but yeah, I've, I've got him a joke gift, which is just a half pound Reese, of Reese Cups. Which he will actually enjoy. Yeah. Well, who wouldn't Reese Cups? 
yeah, and like it's a gift. Uh, people that don't, people that are allergic to peanut butter. Oh, fair enough. Fair enough. Because I think Reese's cups still have enough actual peanut butter in them to be qual to qualify. Oh yeah, yeah. Especially if you have a severe allergy. Yeah. But, uh... but yeah, I, I'm I'm, I'm kind of like you. I don't mind getting the gifts. I enjoy getting. You know, I enjoy the giving the gifts. It's the physically going out to the stores and searching for them that I'm like. Ugh. I mean, it's like this year. I got you. I got yours online. I got uh, Mrs. the Token Millennial gift online. Though to be fair, this may be the first time I've gotten her an actual gift as opposed to just a gift card because you, you you finally told me something she wanted this time. Look, it. I had to think of a lot of things on that line of mm -hmm, mm -hmm. gift giving. But uh, also. Amazingly enough, in my 27 years of life, we've only this year made, or this year I have made a mistake, which we just talked about earlier. Oh, yes, yes, yes. Were we, yeah. Because, well, Dad knows uh, this. We've actually gotten our father the same gift. Yeah, we. this is the first year we've ever done it. But Dad is also pretty bad about being like, oh, just give me, you know, whatever. Money's fine. But he gave out a digital weight scale and a, a specific type of no spill gas can. Uh, he and, he's in lawn work, so it's... yeah. And a lot of times he'll give you the ideals for like practical stuff, you know. I think last year I got him straps to hold one of his mowers down. I mean, it's he doesn't and like, he doesn't really collect anything. You know, it, it tends to be you know sports related clothing or sporting goods or practical stuff that he can use around the house or you know in his business. Yeah, one year Eric got him like eight quarts of oil, <laughs> and Dad was happy to get it because oh, Dad yeah. needed it. But yeah, it was a digital weight scale that he wanted and a gas can. And our my older brother, your younger brother Eric, messaged me. Was like, "So were you getting him the digital scale?" And I went, "Oh no, I got him the uh, the gas can. You can get him the digital scale." Wait, did you get him the gas can? And Eric went, "Well, no. I remember him sa saying that to Jason at you know Sunday morning church." And I went, "I wasn't at Sunday morning church. I was at Sunday night church." Oh no! And then I messaged you immediately because yep. I'm pretty sure we've had both. I had made the mistake of hearing him say two gifts, and then discarding the one that I was supposed to give get to let Eric get do it. And then realized I had taken yours, mm -hmm. but you had clearly already bought it. <laughs> yep. But luckily, a gas can is something father uses multiples of. Yeah, this is true. I'll have one in each truck. It'll be fine. Yeah. It actually won't be a problem to get two of this gift, so I'm not returning it. We just have but to make sure agreed... first. Yes, we have agreed. Dad opens yours first. You take full credit for it, and then I'll go... Hi, here's my whoopsie gift. And he won't care. I mean. And he'll go, all right, now I got two in case. <laughs> and he'll be happy just because he knows one will break. But, uh. Or one will get run over or something. And, of course, there's the true addition that I, I think most of us, most of the boys, and me included, end up doing. Is at some point either talking to Dad or calling Dad up. So, uh. What would Kim like? Oh, I've already got. I've already bought something for for your sister that you can give. Oh her. yeah, sweet. Look, I've I've never. I've one year. One year I bought stuff for Kim, and it was stuff for Kim's dog, and she loved it. But I almost never actually buy for Kim. Kim gives a list of things to Dad. Dad buys them all, and we pay Dad. Yep. And that's not a you know that's that's not a callous thing. That's just. We don't know what she is. She's in the clothes. I have no I'm idea sorry. what, what, what I'm, I'm sorry. My, my spouse is... <laughs> just asked me if that's why I was giving my dad money for gifts to people last year. Yes, that is it. Yeah, the exception to that would be every now and then... It, <laughs> Every now and then, Dad would tell me something that she wanted that he hadn't gotten yet, and I'd go get it. Or I'd get her a gift card to her favorite store or something. But... I'm sorry, I'm sorry. I have, I have, this is a big segue, I'm sorry. Elizabeth doesn't know the system of Dad buying gifts and telling you to pay for them for other people. 
but dad apparently thinks elizabeth knows because dad sent a text to elizabeth saying i got eric socks they're ten dollars do you want them and elizabeth has been confused about it apparently <laughs> because elizabeth doesn't know the system <laughs> But now it all makes sense to her. Yes, yes. Uh, now she's probably sitting there going, yes, I want, in on, I want in on this system. <laughs> Why is this only coming up now, sweetie? <laughs> well, she probably didn't want to come to you going, I think your dad's weird. What is, what is, what is this about? Oh, Elizabeth thought buying a gift for someone through someone else would be rude. Some not, families not probably family. consider it that. It all depends on what's acceptable in your family. And that, now Elizabeth is in awe of our family's optimized gift-giving system. Well, you know, it really comes down to, you know, we want to do the exchanging of gifts, but it's not that important. In some ways. So yeah, there 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 have been times me and Dad have swapped gifts and uh, money just in the garage. Oh, I mean, on at least one occasion, day, I... I was paying him back for him picking up his gift. Uh, usually, when it was something sporting related, where he wanted a very very specific something. Well, that's like us in games, where like he was like. When we were kids, he was like, no, I'm getting it. You have to write down the name. And I'm mm. like, oh, gosh. This is a risky business. This could, go, this could go wrong in so many ways. Yep. This could go real, real south. But let's see. Is there any, like, last-minute Christmas activities? You know, before we wrap up, because we're, we're, we're getting close to 45 minutes in, uh, let's end it with... Think of one gift that you were not expecting that you got that you got really excited about. Uh, you know, at any oh. age range. Ah, uh, this is gonna... Uh, can it be one that it wasn't immediate? Sure, that's fine. Okay, this one built up over time on me, and I'm like... I'm super sad that I lost it. It was literally a Bible mom and dad got for me that had like my name engraved at the bottom right mm -hmm. but it was like it was a big leatherback like a soft leatherback bible that like every other book has now paled in comparison of how nice that felt in my hand really like the pages just turned easy and it was it was just nice and i lost it and i'm sad about that but like it's a gift that at the time i was just like okay whatever i don't i don't care i'll carry it with me to make sure you don't get mad at me because now i own a bible and have to carry it with me but now that i don't have it anymore i'm like oh that was a really good book to carry around with me like right i just size. enjoyed it more. Stick together yeah. yeah it was like easy to read it had a bookmark attached to it and all this stuff you know yep yep because now i've got like this little like tiny one that clips and i'm just like i'm not throwing it away because it still works but gosh it is not it is not as nice as my old one it's not as easy to reference yeah that's like the yeah. first time you get one with the tabs on the side where you can find the book squitter it had that too <clears throat> yeah all the good ones too for me it's gonna be something much more much geekier so milton bradley did a game years back called uh, hero quest uh, it was actually Games Workshop that did the miniatures and stuff for it. Uh, and I had been seeing the commercials for it. Man, I wanted that thing. But I never, I didn't mention it to anybody. Because I was like, yeah, it's probably expensive. Yeah, I didn't, you know. And I don't know if the folks saw me drooling over it. I don't know if Mother just saw it in a store and went, that's something he'd like. Because she will be amazingly intuitive about that sometimes. Uh, yeah, because, like, sorry to segue off yours, right, but, like, yeah, like, I ran, like, Mother randomly bought me a doormat once, 
and it was just the a Marvel doormat, and I was like, this looks really nice. Like it was one of like the the covers where the the old you know the old version of the Avengers with the old art style, and I was like, I just really like this. Mm-hmm. This is nice. We it's not something I would ever thought to get for myself. In some of the so you know the actual play games, well. Not the icons when you're in, but the one I do on Tuesdays. I use this little wooden tray to roll my dice in because it makes a nice noise. And uh, and it's a game where you roll a lot of dice, so I don't want to do it on the computer because it takes too long to type in. And it's it's this little wooden tray with these little clamps like you could put it on an armrest of a chair or something. Mom saw it at yard, so I went, ooh, he could roll dice in that for his little games. I was like, I looked at it and went, yeah, 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 I could. And I've been using it for years now. But, uh, but you know, the Hero Quest thing, uh, I say at a store. She may have seen it at a yard sale. She's a big yard seller. But, but the thing was brand spanking new, whatever it was. And that is probably one of the gifts that I walked in and got the most excited about because I was really not expecting it. It was something I really, really wanted. Uh, and boy, have I gotten my use out of that thing. Me and the Brooks Brothers played and played and played and played that game. And then when we got into Dungeons & Dragons... In the mid to late 90s. I've been using the miniatures in that thing from then till now. You know, I was, I was going... I'm getting ready to run some D&D again. I was going through my miniatures the other day, sorting them out. There's all the... Some of them are a little worse for wear now. You know, swords have snapped off or whatnot. But, uh... Don't you also have, like, two copies of it now? Yes, I bought a I bought an unopened copy at a, at a con a few years back. Up in the... Up in my game closet. Is it still unopened? I say unopened. It was shrink wrapped. I don't know if that's the original shrink wrapping or not. But yes, I have not opened it. Uh, oh. Good on you, I guess. Well, you know, if I ever get a niece or nephew that gets into this sort of stuff, that's when I plan on plan on cracking it open. Hint, hint, nudge, nudge. Oh, look at me, I'm Jason. I bought a mummy, and I'm so I'm so happy to crack it open one of these days. <laughs> uh, you know, rule-wise, me and you played a whole lot of HeroScape, which was another one Milton Bradley did with a bunch of miniatures, and it uses the same system for their combat, the same dice, all that jazz. Hmm. Uh, Lord, I love HeroScape. But anyway, this is not the, this is not the time for us to wax poetic about how good Milton Bradley is at those times of games. Out of randomly doing those kind of games every now and then. So that might be a subject for future, a future something. Next right, we should definitely talk about it sometime. Be a good not, episode. Not, not during Christmas. No. So anyway, unless there's anything else you want to bring up, I think we'll go ahead and wrap up here at about the 50 minute mark. Uh, I wish we had made going to the movies after Christmas more of a thing we did regularly. Obviously not this year. No, no, no. No, definitely not this year. Maybe next year? But, you know... Yeah. Maybe next year. Well, the trick is doing it on Christmas, you know, working Thursdays like I do, I almost always go in that night. Yeah. But, uh... And it... Wasn't it Thanksgiving that we went to the movies? I mean, you and Eric that time that we went to the Muppet movie? Yes. I think it's Thanksgiving. But yeah, that I just remember like fun. going to the going to the movies at after a holiday was always nice to me just because of how empty the theater was. Mm. So that's more of a holiday tradition you wish we had. Yeah. Because like a good movie after like a good a good time with the family and then go watch a good movie, it's kind of like the high five at the end of the night. Mm-hmm. Just a nice little way to cap it off. Yeah. Well, anyway, I guess we'll wrap up here. Uh, if you've got any Christmas traditions that you've got that you'd like to mention, uh, or really just any, any contacts or anything you wanted to talk to us about or comment on, uh, you can reach us at thenerdeternal at gmail.com. You can reach us on Facebook. Just search for The Nerd Eternal. Uh, we're on Twitter at the Nerd Eternal. Uh, Wait, which one of us is handling the Twitter? Uh, me and Todd both do stuff Ooh, on Twitter. It's a risky gamble right there. Mostly we just kind of post the stuff we've done. Okay. But you can definitely reach us that way. Uh, and of course, on our website, thenerdeternal.com, 
you can leave comments that way. And uh, hope everybody has a Merry Christmas. And we'll see you. We should be recording next week. I can't think of any reason we wouldn't be. So we'll see you next I, time. I, I, I can think of one. What's that? But, uh, reason, reason CDL ain't here right now. Oh, yeah, okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. There's potential. We'll, well, at the very least, a couple of us will get together and record something. Yeah, yeah. So anyway, I've been your host today, the experienced some called Jason, and with me has been... The token scared of Todd on Twitter, Tarky. <laughs> he keeps most of that stuff to his personal accounts, I think. And we will talk to y'all next time. Merry Christmas, everybody.